Hey, what's up YouTube? Uh, my name is Christian Bunsell and uh, I'm from Empire VFX and today I'm going to be showing you uh, some of the basics of Buju 5 and some of uh, some tips to get your tracks looking better. So, firstly we're going to be starting by making your footage better to work with Buju. So I'm just going to open After Effects and you're going to be wondering why I'm in After Effects when this is a Buju tutorial and that's because um, really, for some reason, Buju really doesn't like uh, movie files or uh, any file type of that sort when you're working with uh, Windows. Now, I have a Mac too, and Buju seems to like movie files on there, but really, even if I'm on Mac, I like to import them as JPEGs or PNGs. So let's just quickly import our footage, and we'll find that here, and we'll hit open, and that'll take a little bit. And we'll just drag this directly into a new composition. And now we're going to hit composition, add to render queue, and I'm just going to render this out as a. Well, you can render it as a PNG sequence, but I like a JPEG sequence and quality on full. And just don't really mess with anything else. You can do whatever else you want, but pretty much everything is automatically there. So we'll hit render. Oh, and sorry, I'll actually didn't specify that. And I'll render that to my desktop and just go here. Alright, so I'll just name this Buju Tutorial. I spelled that wrong completely, so hit render and I'll come back. Well, actually, you know what, it's already almost done, but I'll come back when it's completely finished. Okay, so now I have all these files all over my desktop, and they're everywhere. I did not mean to do that at all, but it's fine. So, now I'm going to just go with my Buju, and this is just the basic interface. I actually reset my interface, so that way I could show you what it will look like when you go into Buju. If you're using an earlier version, so it might look a little bit different. Uh, I think the playhead area down here looks weird so we're gonna go ahead and hit import sequence and I'm gonna go ahead and just navigate to my footage desktop and hit that and it'll automatically know to import it as a JPEG sequence so we'll hit open and all your frame rates should be correct now if you want to change your frame rate just hit this rule down window because sometimes it's not perfect and sometimes it will um, mess up the frame rate especially on Mac. It really, really, uh, it'll change it from 23 to 25 and it'll just, it won't work at all. So, uh, just make sure you know that frame rates are very important when it comes to 3D tracking. So, now we'll go to remove type and if you're just panning your camera and it's not in 3D space and you're just, it's like it's on a tripod and it's just panning over, you're not moving the camera back and forth through space, then you're actually going to hit this drop down and you can, you're going to hit nodal pan, but mine does move out a little bit, so it free moves so Buju knows that. And make sure you check if it's interlaced or if it has any fields, and we'll hit apply. Close this. So, just play through the footage here. Looks pretty good. Um, it's it's not bad at all, and I really think it's a pretty, pretty good tra footage to work with. And when you're shooting your footage, some things you probably want to know are you want to shoot with the higher shutter speed. I was shooting at 1 over, I don't know, but I was shooting, I know I was shooting over 1 over 100 because um, motion blur is very, it's like the worst thing you can possibly have when it comes to 3D tracking because otherwise it's like impossible for, you know, most motion blur tracking programs to even be able to figure out what kind of track you're using. So, um, now what we're going to do is we're going to basically just walk you through your interface before we actually do any tracking. So you can use your middle mouse to zoom out to see tracks that are further out and you can zoom in. But that that's your middle mouse button right there. And uh, import sequences to import your sequence, edit cameras are, we'll get into that later, but it's basically to edit the, the camera properties. Uh, masks are pretty important too, especially for doing facial tracking, which I'll make a later tutorial. Or if you're trying to mask out certain parts of the footage, so that way Buju knows to ignore that area. And add target tracks, or it's like After Effects, the manual tracking. 
scene geometry is if you're taking it and do a 3D program, and the rest of this up here, like I said, we will get into that later. So, to do your basic 2D tracks, this is what I like to do, is I just hit track features, and you can go to your advanced tab over here, and you can select how sensitive it can be, and how many tracks it will make, but I really... I, I would leave it low if your footage is not that chaotic because it's just more rendering and not rendering but more loading time and it just it really it, it, it's it's like it's like overkill if you're doing it and you don't need it so I would just keep it at whatever you need unless your scene is very chaotic you can move it all the way up here and it makes a lot of tracks so well we're actually gonna close this and we're gonna edit our camera and we're just gonna make sure everything still matches and you know this is very important because I don't want anything, you know, to to just Buju. Even though it's very, it's a good program. It's just that it really just changes things, and your footage isn't set up properly a lot of the time. So we're gonna go to setup, and we're just going to hit our camera. And I'm sorry, I'm going to this a lot, but setup, uh, edit focal constraints. And if you're doing any kind of zooming, change this range from constant, double click, and varying. And any kind of zooming, because otherwise Bougie will not know. Because really, it's not something that it's not something that you will be able to fix later. It's very hard to fix later. And zooming is, you know, it's something you need to account for when you're doing tracking. And so we're gonna go, you know, here and assess lens distortion. And this will, if you're, this, you know, if you're shooting from far away and your lens, it's kind of hard to explain, but I think right here it starts to get a little bit distorted towards those edges over there, but it's not enough to where you would notice. But this is, you want to watch out for lens distortion, and if you work in video a lot, you'll know that you have to watch out for lens distortion. And uh, let's see, let's go through here, and I think that we're good here. Just make sure your frame rates are not messing up. And now we're going to hit track features. Just yeah, you know, leave that there. And once you have your setup, you just hit start. And it should go and it won't take very long and it'll be done. Okay, so now you can see we're done and we'll just scrub back here. And these are actually they're not 3D tracks, they're 2D tracks, and these will just stick there. And uh this is, it's pretty good, and you can see they're moving around, and it, it, there's some motion blur, but it's its good, and what I like about Buju is it's very automated, but it still gives you that control that you need, and Buju is really good at, it's a really good tracking program, and so it should be able to figure out a lot of this on its own, but you should give it some information to work with, but before we do that, we're actually going to make these into 3D tracks now, so we're going to hit camera solve, and make sure you, if you really want a good uh, solve, you don't have to do this if it's quick, but if you really want a good solve, hit optimize camera path smoothness and um, hit start. And that really shouldn't take very long, but I'm going to cut anyways just because it's pointless to wait here. Okay, so now that we have our tracks 3D solved, or 3D is a word, and this solve is pretty good. And there's one way we can truly test if a solve is good we can just add our test object and change it with a ladybug or an arrow or something like that. It doesn't really matter because this won't actually be on your final export because really Buju, what it actually does is just export tracking data. It doesn't export any video or anything. So we'll go forward here and this isn't exactly, you know, any kind of complicated movement and there's not some kind of dolly shot, but I, I noticed that there's a little bit of jello cam right here because my... Eh, Jello cam shouldn't affect Buju, but it sometimes it can really screw up a track just for that moment, but things start to slide. So you really want to watch out for that too. And we have that done. So if it worries you, if this bothers you, just delete it, but or sorry, delete it just by right clicking and hit delete. But it really shouldn't, it won't be in your final render anyways. So one other thing that I really, really want to stress because this is a really overlooked thing. In Buju because there's a lot more features than just going track features, camera solve, scene geometry because that's you know that's not it's not a ten thousand dollar program that you just there's three features that you mainly use I mean there's so much more to Buju and 
you can really mess around with it. But I mean, not mess around, but you can really just get a perfect track in this if you really know what you're doing. So one way to achieve that perfect track is to go to setup and set up and you go to edit camera and advance will be checked so you hit advance and then if you have film back with basically what this will do is it's it's how much how big your lens or sensor is in your camera and you some people won't know this if you're using an old Sony handy cam I don't really think they have those I don't know if the sensor type will know this but once they're getting into more professional cameras, there's a lot more, it'll tell you. I mean, that's one of the selling points. So, you can change it from millimeters to inches, but I was shooting this on a Sony FS100, so this will be, I think, 35. I mean, 35 was about what it was, and that's, you know, that was, it's about 35. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get it around what you were shooting at, and Sony FS100 has a you know, big 35, super 35 sensor. So we'll just hit apply on that, and that should clean up our track a little bit. And as you can see, you know, that little jello right there kind of fixed that a little bit more because I saw it, you know, I saw some tracks get a little moved around. So now we have all of these, and these dots, they're differently colored for a reason. and. They're divided between good tracks and bad tracks. So here you have your good tracks and bad tracks. And you know, the blue are bad and the yellow are good. So, or actually, I might have reversed that, sorry. But um, yeah, you have the good tracks and the bad tracks. And you can set that up and, uh, not set it up, but you can, you can fix that by just, you know, when you're exporting, you can do export flag tracks and those are for tracks that are better because some tracks are going to be better than others like say if these two that I'm looking at right here say if they just started sliding around you don't want those in your final render or export because when you're exporting stuff like that you're affecting what you're actually you're, what, you're, what your camera perceives and that's not going to do fun final render because or do really well when you're finally rendering everything out and all your stuff is tracked in your program you have your 3D object there and then all of a sudden it's just sliding around and that's because of one little track right here. You could have just easily eliminated those two and you know you can just delete those. It's really easy. And um, gold tracks are really good. These are the, they're golden. They're gold tracks and those are the better tracks and the blue tracks are not the good tracks. So you know that's not really very good. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to set up our scene geometry. You don't have to do this. But this is if you're taking it into a 3D program, because I don't, depends, if you're using Nuke, it can, sometimes it can read 3D data, but After Effects can't read that 3D data, so it doesn't really matter. So if we just, this is the part that gets kind of confusing, but I'm not going to cover it now because we're not taking it into a 3D program, this is just a general export. So I guess uh, I'll go over masking, because if you're okay so masking is like masking in after effects you're masking something out but if you have say a shot of cars going by you don't want tracks sticking to those cars because it'll really affect the track because you're shooting at one over a hundred but the motion blur of that car is very very strong and the tracks will get messed up and like i said one bad track can really ruin your shot and i'm not saying the tracks in the sink that i just deleted were bad but i'm just showing you an example so when you want to add a mask to anything, just hit add poly masks and we'll just, uh, this is not really because I don't have anything on my scene that's bad for tracking, but if you want to add a mask, just, it's like adding a mask in any, you know, uh, program. So we'll just click, 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 click. And you know, this is well, like one, a horrible mask, but now, Bougie will ignore that and you can rotoscope it frame by frame. But I'm not because I don't even need a mask in the scene. I'll just undo that. And uh, you know, I'll just undo that and that's perfect. So right here we have a pretty good track and there's some more advanced stuff I'll get into later with Bougie. But right there you have a good track. And now I'm gonna go over to export camera. But before I do that, I'm just going to check my focal constraint, and like I said, it's constant. And we'll check our frame rate, because 
one one thing I always preach is that you always have to check what you're going to be finally exporting and rendering because really if you're rendering out something that's that's flawed it could have been easily probably avoided by just checking your render one final time so i'll just go up here to my uh setup at camera make sure everything here is good or change everything you got you know pretty much everything here is good uh I'm just making sure I'm not leaving anything out because, like I said, everything here should be perfect. And looks like everything is good. And now what we're going to do is export camera and we'll scale it by whatever you want to scale it by because these or this is what you set it as. So I just like to scale it by 100, but this is this is how much space it gives it and it's it's different every for everybody. And this is one the neat thing about Buju. This is what I was talking about earlier, export flag tracks only, and you can flag certain tracks by just going here, say you like that track, and you can flag for export. Now there's some, you can just select all of these and right click and then uncheck flag for export, and those won't go to your export, but just turn them back on, uh, and flag for export. So all of these are, all of them are good. So. Now we're just going to go back into our exporting camera and uh, export camera. And if you're taking in the, all these different, there's so many different programs. I'm not even going to go through it, but there's, you know, whatever you, whatever program you use, just make sure you check that off because it really doesn't matter. I usually use Max 3D Studio, 3D Studio Max, but you can, there's, you know, Soft Image, Flame, Fusion, Houdini, Lightwave, all these different formats you can put it out as, but I'll just put it as an After Effects. And this is important too. So move type. So if you have a moving camera in a static scene, what that basically means is that, you know, you have a 3D track and you're walking forward and you have some pretty, you know, some basic movement and everything is in your scene is pretty stationary and your camera's moving. So that would, you know, that's, that's usually what you're gonna end up using, but if you have a panning camera translating scene, that is if you are panning and the scene is moving with it, so you want to make sure you have that. And then static camera moving scene is if you're doing like an object track, like if you were trying to track a belt or somebody's face. And that's, now we'll get into facial tracking later because that's one of my favorite subjects in Buju. Got that. So you are ready for your final export, or render, sorry, yeah, export it out of Buju and just make sure you save it to a good place. I'll just save it to here if I go on. But let's do this. Hit save and it was not really long because really what it is is just some, a script. And you can close 3DS and this is good. So uh, thanks for watching my tutorial. Please make sure to check out my channel uh, later and subscribe. Um, so thanks for watching and bye.